everyone, I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and welcome to Build. Summer loves are intense, brief, and sometimes life-changing. That's the case in Premature, a film that explores the passionate connection between Ayana and Isaiah, two young artists navigating the complexities of love. Director Rashad Ernesto Green joins us to talk about the film, along with co-writer and star Zora Howard and Joshua Boone. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So I saw the film yesterday, and I love it. Uh, I live in Harlem. In, in the summer especially, you see all the kids hanging out, and you always kind of wonder what's going on inside of those lives. And so I just love that this is a little snapshot into what, you know, how complex it can be to be a teen. Uh, the emotions are always peak, and this film captures that so beautifully. Um, you guys premiered this at Sundance last year, 2019. That's right. So what has just the experience been like premiering this film and getting it out for people to see? I mean, we, you know, we started alone in a room, uh, Zora and I, so, you know, about three years ago. So the fact that it's out in front of people now to, to see across the world um, is a dream come true. You know, uh, Sundance, there was a great reception last year. And uh, IFC picked us up, and we are uh, just so blessed to have partners that uh, that know how to release independent cinema, and and yeah, we're 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 so happy to be releasing tomorrow. Yeah, what has it like been? What has it been like for you? Because I imagine you guys have to go to these different festivals and sort of sell the movie, but also experience people watching it. What has that just been like for you? It's so exciting. You know, we wrote this film in Harlem. We shot it in Harlem. We're both. All three of us live in Harlem, so it was a very New York film. And then to take it to places like Baltimore and Minneapolis and see that it's resonating with those audiences as well, it's a gift, you know, every single time. Yeah, and I'll say, uh, you know, Sundance has always been a goal. And to go with this film specifically, you know, with Zora and Rashad, like, it was just an amazing time, you know, just to go on that journey, you know, feel that energy. Yeah. Definitely gonna go back, you know. Um, and it's just nice to, after the work is seen there, to know that it's going to be seen for more eyes and everything, it's, like, it's just nice to to know that the work goes beyond just the festival, mm -hmm. you know, um, to have it in theaters, to have it available to people to see whenever, however, like, it's fascinating, it's a goal, and it's a dream, and to have that actualized is a blessing, to say the least, so. It's so cool because it's so personal. I know you guys have known each other for a very long time, right? When did that collaboration start? I've known Zora since she was 11 years old. <laughs> I was... I was an actor first and uh, doing some theater in Harlem and Zora was hanging up the costumes after the show. And a couple of years later, cast her in a short film also called Premature mm -hmm. and we've been friends ever since. And a few years ago, we decided to get in a room and just write something together. And we wanted to make a love story because we felt like there was an overabundance of films that dealt with black pain and suffering and trauma. And we wanted to contribute something to the other side of that equation. And we decided to explore black life and black love instead. Yeah. So in the short, uh, is that a continuation of that story or did you guys change it up? When we first got into the room, we said we wanted to make a love story. We didn't necessarily intend to uh, to expand the short just yet. Uh, the short has to deal with pregnancy and teen pregnancy and how she has to deal with it within her family and community. And while we were writing that love story, themes and characters in the world from the short began to creep in and influence our process, and we just embraced those themes. What is that process like co-writing? I didn't know what it was going to be like right. when we first started. Um, again, Rashad and I have been friends for a very long time, so we knew each other on that level, but I think it's something completely different to know somebody as a collaborator. Uh, so we had to learn what that was for the two of us. And before we even put pen to pad, there was a lot of listening to music, a lot of watching film, and a lot of storytelling between us because neither of us are 17 anymore. So we had to go back to that time in our lives and really you know, investigate what it was like to be of that age in New York City. We're both native New Yorkers um, in the summertime and falling in love. And we shared a lot, you know, knowing each other for that long, there was a lot that we didn't know of one another that came out in the co-writing process. We got deep. Yeah, yeah I asked because it feels, the, the writing feel, feels so seamless and authentic. You know, you guys work to ver together very beautifully because these characters are so well-defined. Ayana is um, so fierce and so passionate and so raw. And what do you think is so special about playing somebody at that age falling in love? 
Oh, the stakes. You know, as actors, that's what we love. We love high stakes. We love to be able to sink our teeth into that. You know, that when it's life or death, yeah. and when else was anything life or death? And at 17 years old, falling in love. Um, so we love that as writers, but especially as a performer, um, to 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 bring that to life every day on set was a, was a dream. Really, it's a a performance that you know we don't always get to do um, in our careers as performers. So. Is there anybody specifically that inspired her for you? My mama, yeah, absolutely, and I think Ayana's mama inspires her, but she, this is a young woman, we're meeting this young woman at a point where she's kind of defining the kind of woman she wants to be in life, and she's looking everywhere. She's looking at her group of girlfriends, she's looking in the mirror, she's looking at her mama, and then she's finding some of it too in this relationship with this young man. So I think looking at the most primary um, role, the mother in a young woman's life, that's, yeah, for me, that's what it is, so. Yeah. And you mentioned Joshua's character, Isaiah. He's a little bit older. Yeah. yeah. He thinks he's wiser. I don't know if he is all the time, but she definitely is inspired by his intellect and creativity. Absolutely. Uh, so tell us a little bit about him and what was fun for you to sort of bring to life. Well, I love that, you know, Isaiah was a transplant. He's not born and bred in New York, you know, uh, neither am I I'm from Virginia. Yeah. So to bring that energy, you know, that artist energy, that transfer energy, if you will. Like, there's a lot of adjusting that happens when you're not from here, you know, from the cityscape, the landscape, to the people, how you interact with people, you know, down to how you develop or find relationships. It's all ingrained into the story, you know, the newness of it. Uh, I know when I first moved up, like, you know, <sighs> my mind was split two different ways and, you know, how, and how I wanted to behave as a young man in New York. And, but when I found someone I wanted to cling to, just that excitement, the energy, the passion behind that. Um, I'll never forget that first, you know, interaction, that first relationship I look forward to. And that's definitely ingrained in the story, you know, and um, I appreciate the honesty and the truth that they brought to that. So. Yeah, their love is so jazz, you know, like it's so <laughs> pure and musical and yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes you believe that you can find love at 17. Do you guys think you can? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. That was, was a quick uh, answer. <laughs> I was all the way in love in 17. When I was 17, I was you were. in love with everything, yeah. you know? I, I love that. I love that. I love that notion of energy. I, and I do agree, you know, um, to a huge extent. And um, someone who's loved many times, been in love once, you know, I, I, I kind of envy it also to experience that energy that early, you know? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, that's when you're so uninhibited, you know, and, and you haven't necessarily um, experienced your first heartbreak. So you're just free to explore and open your heart. And it's almost more pure when you're that young. Yeah. And she lets him know that, too. She's like, this doesn't just happen. Like, people wait their whole lives to have that connection. And it is so beautiful and raw at that age. Uh, the story's set in Harlem, which really is its own character. It just breeds a whole new life. I don't know if you guys have been in Harlem in the summer, but it has its own charged energy. Um, so aside from you being from Harlem, why was it important for you to set a love story there? Well, I've been in Harlem for the last two decades of my life. Uh, Zora's uh, from Harlem as well. And yeah, we just, we see Harlem depicted on screen in certain ways. You know, it kind of gets a bad rap in certain films. And so we wanted to explore what we knew about Harlem, which was, you know, our families, our loves, our lives, you know. And it's, uh, you know, it's not the 125th Street in the Apollo and Lenox Avenue. It's not the hustle and bustle. You know, it's a, maybe a little bit more residential, but we still have access to 145th Street, which has a little bit more vibrant energy and the parks and, um, and, the, and the energy of Harlem. So we, we, we're, we're in love with our neighborhood yeah. and we wanted to see that on screen between you know these two young people and and, and enjoying a summer especially, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I will say like when I first moved to New York, I was in I lived in Queens. I was in Astoria, and I loved it. It was peaceful. It was quiet. You know, it was needed for me. But I was always hanging out in Harlem. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, it was more black people there at the time. You know, <laughs> it's kind of kind of changing. But um, Word. like it it definitely. I was always there to the point where I have to move here because I need it. It's something about where I'm from and pursuing and going after what we're going after and what we you know, live and, and do in, in, our, in our lives that I want. It's this undercurrent of energy constantly that other pockets of New York don't have. And, and y'all, you know, you've born and bred in it, you know, and it just hit me that that's what 
drew me to Harlem. The fact that if I wanted to get up at 1 a.m. in the morning and do work, there's enough energy circulating around in the neighborhood for me to do that. Yeah. You know, it's something special that, you know, I can't fully articulate, but it's, it's alive and it's alive in the, in the film as well, so. And it's such a rich history, a cultural history. You walk down those streets and you know that Malcolm walked those streets. Yeah. You know, and um, it just, it's just wonderful to, to be a part of it. And of course, it's changing very rapidly. So we wanted to capture this moment in time, and, but, but we captured it on the medium of film so, so it gives it a nostalgic quality, so it, it feels timeless. Yeah, that's, I mean, I lived in Harlem for 10 years, and I just was like, I've seen that group of four girls. I've wondered, what are they talking about? Like, it felt just so lived in. Like you said, you're kind of capturing this moment that Harlem's in. Um, there's a lot of themes in, in the movie. Love is clearly one of them. I also noticed the, the fatherhood um, theme. You know, Isaiah's father was not there. He had passed on. Uh, her father wasn't there. Was that intentional, just kind of have that explored? You know, I would say that we wanted to make the characters as three-dimensional as we possibly could. Yeah. So we culled from our own life experiences, um, and we drew characters that, if, if, if we ourselves did not live those life experiences, that we know someone who did. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think it was important for... Ayana's young woman, I'd love for you to, to, to speak to it, you know, that this relationship with her mother, you know, that her mother, the, the, the reason why, you know, she has such fear concerning uh, Ayana's future yeah. is because she herself was Ayana at one point. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was important just to have that bond clear of anyone else. And, and we don't necessarily talk about or know what happened, but, but we assume that, um, that her mom you know, was, 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 was a young mom. Yeah. Um, and, and in Isaiah's case, you know, uh, to have that bond you know, with a father that he's looking up to and how, and how that feeds into his artistic life, and how he questions his music and feels like he has to live up to somebody, uh, that was very important for us to draw. Yeah, I just felt that without giving spoilers away, there's just like a pivotal moment where I thought about how the impact of their own parents probably had on them in, in those tense kind of heightened moments for sure. Did you have anything to add? Yeah, I think that what we were intentional about was um, centering the women in Ayana's life and sending the women relationship. So that is between Ayana and her mother and also Ayana and her girlfriends, those young women on the train that you spoke of, um, that again, this woman, this young woman on this big cusp in her life, you know, the edge of the world, one foot in her mama's house still and looking forward to college, that she's really looking for models of how to be in this world. We always are, right? But how to be a young black woman standing and strong in this world. And we have to search for those models because they're not you know, readily presented to us, especially not in the media, right? So that's what we see Ayana doing, and she's looking at her mother, and she's deciding, is this where I want to go? Do I want to do this, replicate this in my own life? And looking at her girlfriends and the choices that they're making and with their, their own family structures, and is that what I want? And if we're, when you're looking around and you want something different from where do you see, where do you, you know, where do you go? And Ayana, we see, she goes inside. Yeah, mm -hmm. And we see that through her art. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some beautiful poetry in the movie. Did you write those words? Because I know I you're did. a poet. I did. Yeah. Yes. yes, yes. So what was that experience like for you, you know, putting your words in a film? It's a funny story. <laughs> um, actually, the draft that Rashad and I went into production with, there was actually no poetry oh. in, in the script. Um, Ayana was always a writer. We knew that. Um, but I was resistant about actually hearing the verse in, in the film. I had not seen too many cinematic examples where I would really loved that. And I thought we could just sidestep that. We didn't need to do that in this one. Um, and we were on set. Uh, shooting the scene, shooting a scene, and we were about to hear Ayana uh, speak some of her poetry, and in the script itself, we just cut to another scene. Uh, but on the day, Rashad suggested that I just share a poem, just say a poem, why don't you just say a poem? It's not gonna end up in a film. Uh, it ends up in the film, uh, along with some other poetry, but that's you know one of the gifts of working with a partner, you know, working alongside someone is sometimes you have a vision, you have an idea of what exactly it has to be and what it cannot be. And somebody else will be like, well, hey, what if it was this, you know, and open your eyes up to something. And 
this project was so much a team effort. It was so many people pouring love into this film. And, you know, what Rashad and I first wrote, I couldn't have imagined that, you know, we'd be sitting here and it would become what it is. So, and that's the, you know, that's the beauty of creating with others is, yeah, it's bigger than what you can just do up here on your own. I'm glad you put the poetry in. I thought it was beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I really I'm glad some too. Bars. You got bars. Oh, yeah. Well, you got bars. Yeah, I mean, and she's quite a ringer, actually. She was the first ever uh, youth oh. poet laureate uh, of New York City. Come on with it. Oh. Yeah. Come on with and, it. And published a book of poems when she was 15. Is that right, Clutch? Oh, 17. 17. Oh, 17. Okay. 17. Okay, 17. How 17. appropriate. 17. 17. I love but that. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, it made me want to step up my writing game a little bit. I was like, well, put my pen down. Um, you guys also have an interesting conversation in the movie about art and its role, um, whether it is to always have a point of view or to protest, or is it just to be this magical thing that lives on forever? What are your personal feelings on that? Because I do like in this very political time that we're in, a lot of art is political, but is that something that you feel pressured to do? Or, you know what I mean? Like, how? What is, what's your stance on that? I would say that's sort of the the whole point of that conversation. These these artists are wrestling with that that very notion that we live in a time. Of course, we want to respond to the abuse and the trauma that's being committed on black bodies, but do we as artists feel pressure to do so because it might be marketable? And and when we see time and time again those images uh, portrayed. Are, are we exhausted by them? You know, when d does art start to feel like it's the same? Every time you go to see something about black people, it's about suffering and the history and the trauma and the victimization, where we have lives that are, you know, very similar to everyone else's as well. You know, and so, you know, how do we get to our humanity? Is it, is it always by asking for sympathy? Or is it sometimes by just presenting normal human lives and having you relate to them, you know? Yeah. I think, I think it's okay. I think it's okay to make money off of art, right? I just don't think it's cool to allow the dollar to suffocate the art. And what I mean by that is a lot, some of what I see today um, is devoid, is that the right word? Devoid of care. Like the care is being taken out of the art that we see and we witness. Um, it's targeted, you know, it's formulaic. And, and it's okay, you know, it's okay to make that your mission if that's your mission. But we have to consider people and art should be full of love. And when you tell stories full of love, it is all encompassing. You see all the aspects, all the sides of what it means to be a human being. And I hope that, you know, films like Premature and many others that are out there, you know, that we instill the care back into the work that we do because it's essential both to society and how we interact with each other, how we love each other, no matter what we look like, you know, how we view each other. It's essential to the growth of the heart, the growth of human nature, the growth of that bond. And um, yeah, I don't want to go on further into that, but I believe that if you have the platform, if you have the skill set, the gifts, use them fully. Start here and trust that, you know, the thing that you look for will come with it, you know? When I was watching this, I was like, almost being honest about experience can be political in itself. Just showing the yeah. truth of a situation. Yeah. Right, you sort of knock out two birds with one stone. So, well yeah. done, guys. It's a statement in itself, and we felt yeah. that love is a radical act. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. especially young black love. Um, we have some questions. Who do we have first, Kim? Congratulations on the film. I almost feel like it should be like on a double bill with uh, the photograph. Right. Really, I mean, it's nice to see such black love. Um, Susan Kalechi Watson is your executive producer. Um, and I read in an article last year, I was trying to see the film, I think you had it at S S SVA last, last, last year. Um, what was your interaction with her? Um, how, how did it affect, how did it uh, nurture or anything like that with you? I love Susan, she's a dear friend and sister of mine. Um, not, you know, literal sister, but uh, you know, she's my <laughs> sister. And um, we went to school together. 
we went to NYU graduate acting school together. I was an actor back in the day, and she was my love interest in, <laughs> in all in all the plays that we did at NYU. So, you know, um, it's come full circle where you know she wants to support and make art that she believes in, and and I happen to make something that uh, that she was willing to get behind, and I, I'm I'm really blessed to have her as a friend, and we're blessed to have her as an executive producer. Thank you. And Gabe. Hey, congratulations, guys. Um, Thank you. The one thing you said on young love is uh, is possible, like, but what's the longevity behind it? Is that <laughs> is that realistic, right? No, but the question I had was, what was the hardest scene uh, for you guys to shoot when you were making this movie? You guys have some scenes. Too. I'm sure we all have a different answer for that. <laughs> Who wants uh, to start? Oh, y'all go ahead. <laughs> The, sh the hardest scene to shoot. I will say, you know, I, I'll, I'll answer with two. I know you asked for one. Um, the scene with Ayana, the, the scene with Ayana, we've seen the film or we haven't seen the film? I, I left, I didn't want to go there because I don't know how much people know. Exactly, so I'm going to There's a scene with Ayana in the bathroom um, where she's going through something very difficult and she's alone. Um, and she doesn't have uh, her girlfriends there present. She doesn't have Isaiah there present. Her mother's not there either, and she's, she has to process a very difficult thing by herself. Um, and when shooting it, uh, me as a performer, I felt kind of by myself too, because I was in a room, the very few people in the room, wasn't a big crew day on the set. Um, and you kinda, you gotta call on something deep uh, to get through it just one time, but of course it's film, so we usually have to do it more than one time to have to keep on calling on that thing to get um, to get what we needed to tell the story and to do the story justice. That was a difficult scene. And I'll also say all the scenes that had to do with um, when things weren't going so lovely between Isaiah and Ayana were hard. I guess the scenes when Ayana was by herself <laughs> were difficult because um, it's you know it's just you you have to call on. It's different when you got a scene partner to work with. Yeah, um, the technically hardest scene to shoot was there was there's one in the in the bathroom with some water you know and bodies and everything and uh, <laughs> that was <laughs> probably the technically hardest scene. It's to a shoot. love scene, y'all. Yeah, uh, some water and some stuff. And um, um, emotionally, you know, I'm learning a lot about vulnerability, you know, uh, especially as a black man where I'm from in, in Virginia. And um, there's a scene where we're on the river and I'm referencing my father. And, you know, there's when you reflect on human life with people that you care about and love, you know, it could go um, infinite amount of ways, you know, you could fall all to pieces, you could tell it straight, you know. Um, and I, I, in that moment, you know, because we're on the river, which was beautiful, like it was kind of crazy, like just, it was nice. Um, you know, Rashad and I talk, talked about it and everything, and, and he is reflecting, he is sharing, he's not falling to pieces though, but internally, it's like, man, like, you know, knowing what it means to lose, not my father, thank God, you know, please <laughs> keep him around for a little bit. Um, to to lose people, you know, in tragic ways, or just suddenly, you kind of you kind of waver in those moments. Like, man, like he's not here, you know. And you see this water passing by, and it's just like sometimes life is the same way. And it's just sometimes it was harder to keep it together in moments. And you know, I didn't share that out loud, but you know, it was technically, you know, not technically, figuratively, emotionally, the hardest moment for me. Yeah. And how about you? I would say, you know. The intense, very emotional scenes I enjoy the most. You know, th th those those are such a um, a joy to to direct. Um, and um, I have to give a s just a special shout to to my my two leads here. Um, there's a scene that happens in a vestibule, and there's it's a, it's an argument. Um, and we'd written the scene that it happens in a staircase instead. But on the day, uh, you know, Josh and Zora were saying, you know, it doesn't, doesn't feel right. Uh, you know, I don't know if this would happen here. You know, I don't know if we would get this far into the situation. And I had to remain open, you know, and listen to my leads, you know, who were expressing something. So it's not just actors listening to the direction of a director. Sometimes it's the director has to listen to his cast. 
um, and because and, and and that's that's trust. You know, they they, they understand their characters, um, and 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 the trust goes both ways. So I like the the scene wound up in this vestibule, and and we made the adjustment in the moment. And I thank you, Josh, and I thank you, Zora. You know, for 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 just. We, we all push each other, you know, to become better. And, and, and the scene, you know, and, and, and the film is what it is because of that, that collaboration. As far as from a technical standpoint, yeah, there were, there were scenes that were perhaps more difficult than others. You know, when, when you're losing light in cinema, you know, this, God is a wonderful gaffer. But when he turns off the light, wow. like that is it for you. So, you know, it, it, it puts a pressure on certain scenes to like get it done really quickly. And, and sometimes you started that scene four or five hours ago and, and it looks a certain way and you have to match it to now the light is going down and, you know, and, and it looks dusky. So, so some of those scenes... Um, presented quite the challenge but we 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 got it done we had a, a a cast and a crew that was so willing to work with us and um yeah it was really really a blessing yeah. we got i i got to give that back to him though too because it's rare when you always have a director's ear like no matter what time pressure you know you may be you may be faced with we always had Rashad's ear and sometimes you know there'd be moments where we had to move on and he'll feel good about it. He'll be like, yeah, we got it. But he'll be like, how you feel about it? You know, just to see if we wanted one more, you know? And that's like, that's that's a blessing, man. Like you want those opportunities to be like, okay, that felt good for me, but can I just flex one time just to see what happens, you know? And for him to be receptive to that, just to see, you know, um, just all credit to you and the collaboration, you know, is, is very beautiful to work with both of them, you know, and the rest of the cast and crew, definitely. Thank you, brother. And you can feel it. I mean, there's a fragility to these characters. You know, they're young and they're dealing with these very big, complex issues. And uh, it really is just a ride. It's such an emotional ride and a really beautiful film. So congratulations. I can't wait for people to get a chance to see it. And they won't have to wait much longer, right? It comes out February 21st? It comes out tomorrow. Manana, yeah. right? Is that tomorrow already? <laughs> yeah. yeah, tomorrow. It's right tomorrow. here, you guys, it's in theaters and VOD on February 21st. Put your hands together for Rashad Ernesto Green, yeah, Thor yeah, Howard, yeah, and yeah. Joshua Boone. Yeah.